Hello there. In this video, let's review some geometry concepts. So specifically, we're going to explore the construction of the square root of x, and we're going to explain why this construction works with geometry. Okay, so let's say that you give me a line segment here of some length x, and I want to construct the square root of x. How would I go about that? So one way we can do this, right, is we can start by drawing out some unit length, right, from the end of x, okay? Then if we bisect the line, right, and then draw a circle, right, with a diameter of x plus 1, right, then it turns out that the line that is perpendicular, right, from kind of our origin of 1 to this uh, blue circle here, is going to have a length of square root of x right there right and then finally if we wanted to just project the square root of x back down onto the number line right then we could just project it down using a another circle to help us all right but why does this work why does this actually generate for us a line segment of length equal to square root of x that's what we're going to explore in this video all right, so let's go ahead and start with a little warm up here. And what I want to do is I've inscribed a triangle here in, in this circle, and this triangle has one of its legs along the diameter of this circle, right? So this half length here is going to be equal to the radius R of the circle. And what I want to do is I want to show that A and B are perpendicular to each other, right? We're going to go ahead and see how this applies very, very shortly. But what I can do to show this, let's go ahead and start by drawing a line from the intersection of A and B to our circle's center, right? This, of course, is just going to also have a length of R. Again, this is just the radius of our circle. So now let's go ahead and take a moment and appreciate the fact that we have two isosceles triangles here, right? Let me go ahead and note that this length here, of course, is also R here. So we have two isosceles triangles here. This has side length R, side length R. There's our first isosceles triangle here. And of course, R and R. Here's our second isosceles triangle here. So that means, and I'm going to go ahead and call these angles alpha, right? So these two angles are going to be equal to each other if we have an isosceles triangle. And of course, over here, I'm going to go ahead and call these angles beta, right? Then angles beta are going to be equal to each other as well. And let me just very briefly introduce here angles gamma and delta to complete our triangles. So let me just go ahead and write out for each of these triangles, right? We have 2 alpha plus gamma. That's going to be equal to a total of 180 degrees for a triangle. And we also have 2 beta plus delta is equal to 180 degrees. And if we add these together, we're going to see that we have 2 alpha plus 2 beta plus gamma plus delta is equal to 360 degrees. But what is gamma plus delta? Of course, we can see very clearly that this angle is just going to be 180 degrees, right? So we have 180 degrees here. And so we're going to have two alpha plus two beta is equal to 180, or just alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees. And of course, that angle alpha plus beta is this angle right here. So we have a right angle in our triangle. All right, so now let's go ahead and return back to our construction of square root of x. I went ahead and removed, you know, any unnecessary construction marks, right? But we remember what we were really doing is we were constructing a perpendicular line from this kind of unit length here up to the edge of our circle. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and introduce a triangle just like this. And now because we did our warm up, we already know that this here is a right triangle. Right. And now we can appreciate that we have some triangles here, this blue triangle and this pink triangle. And of course, we have a total triangle formed by the blue triangle and the pink triangle added together. So I'm going to go ahead and call this guy here. I'm going to call this triangle B for blue. I'm going to call this guy here 
triangle P for pink, and I'm going to go ahead and call the total triangle triangle T for total triangle. And we can almost immediately appreciate upon drawing this out that look, our blue triangle here, right, shares all the angles as our total triangle T here. Let me, let me draw this out really explicitly, right? Blue triangle has a 90 degree angle here. My total triangle has a 90 degree angle here. You see that? Obviously, they both share this angle here, right? They both share this angle, we'll call it alpha, right? And so that means, right, they definitely share two out of the three angles. All angles add up to 180 degrees in a, in a triangle, right? So they share all three angles, right? So we can conclude from this that triangle T, right, is similar to triangle B because they share the same angles. But look, we're not done just yet because look, triangle P here, it also shares an angle with triangle T right here. They both share this angle. And they also, they both have, again, this 90 degree angle here. So they also share these angles. So if they share two out of three angles, they definitely share three out of three angles. Triangle P is also similar to triangle T, right? And if triangle P and triangle B are both similar to triangle T, then triangle P is similar to triangle B. All right, so let me go ahead and erase this guy here. Let me just for right now, let's call this side length here. I'm gonna call this Y, okay? This is Y for right now. Well, if we know that triangle P and triangle B are similar, then we know that the length here of triangle B, so that's X, the long leg here, divided by, right, the short length of triangle B. Okay, so that's gonna be Y, so X over Y. That must be equal to the ratio of the long leg of the pink triangle, okay, so that's Y, divided by the length of the short leg of Y. So that's equal to one. And oh my goodness, look at what happens. As soon as we have this equation, we have y squared is equal to x, or y is equal to the square root of x. We have just definitively concluded that, you know, the length of this leg here is going to be equal to the square root of whatever x is. All right, so cool. So hopefully now this construction makes sense and why we have the square root of x popping out of it. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.